Hello, my name is Nick Huntington Klein, and welcome back to this series of videos covering content in my book, The Effect. It's available for free on theeffectbook.net. You can also find links to purchase there if you do so choose. Uh, so we're going to be really starting at this point to get into the nitty gritty of the causal content of it, causal, like causality stuff. We want to figure out how can we figure out how one thing causes the other, uh, especially, I mean, in some cases, we're not even going to be able to run an experiment and we're still going to want to know the answer to that question. Uh, that brings us to the idea of identification and causal identification specifically. So what is identification? Identification is all about the link between the analysis that you have done, the actual calculations that you've done with your data, and the question that you want to answer, what your research question is. And we've covered both of those, right? We talked about research questions in the first set of videos. We talked about doing calculations on data in the second set of videos, and now we are bringing them together. Identification is the process of making sure that the analysis that you have done actually answers the question that you're interested in and not a different question. Right? You can think of lot, lots of different examples where we can get this wrong. The classic one being the difference between correlation and causation. You can do an analysis on two variables and you can find that they in fact are correlated with each other. And you can have done all the proper statistical steps and you can be very confident that yes, these two variables are correlated with each other and that's fine. But if you then take the one step further and say, ah, therefore one of them causes the other, you've probably committed an error of identification. To get at the idea of identification, we need to think about something called the data generating process. Because all these questions that we have, all these research questions that we have are really at some level about where the data came from. What are the sets of laws and regular processes that, that are going on behind the scenes that made the data into what it is? Because think about what we are actually trying to do with empirical research, right? We have this idea, this idea that we have that there's a way that the world works and that we can use our observations of the world to try to figure out how the world works, right? So a classic example is uh, is gravity, right? So we observed for a long time uh, that if you looked up at the sky and you could spot planets, you could see sort of the orbits uh, or the paths that they would take through the night sky. Uh, and now why do they do that? What is the thing that makes them do that? Well, there's a bunch of physical laws going on behind the scenes that, that work whether or not we know about them that make the planets move in those particular shapes. And, and what they, what people did, what scientists did, is that they managed to figure out a way to, by looking at the paths that the planets took, figure out what those underlying physical laws are. And that's what we are hopefully trying to do as well. And if we're doing a good job with identification, then we will do a good job of taking the observations that we have, those planet movements, and turning them into an understanding of where the data came from. Uh, and that's what a data generating process is, a set of laws uh, and relationships that determine why the data is what it is. How did we observe, come to observe the data that we did and not some other kind of data? Let me give you another example of this. So let's talk about this pen sticking in the world of physics here for a second. So let's say that we don't know about gravity yet and, and yet I got this pen. And so I'm gonna give you two observations of data, things that you can actually observe and measure. Now remember, you can't really see gravity. Right? I mean, maybe in some sort of high level particle physics way you can, but imagine you're sort of in the regular world, we can't really see gravity. It's, it's sort of part of the laws that, that lead the world around us to look like it does, but we can't see it. It's not part of our data, okay? What we can see is this pen. And I can see that I'm holding this pen and it is currently up here. Uh, and then we can also see that I let go of the pen and now it's down there. Those are two observations that I have made about the world. Right? We got two variables that we're looking at here, whether I'm currently holding the pen or not, and where the pen is, either it's up here or down there. So if I wanted to use those observations to figure out what the data generating process was, uh, well, that would be the task that we'd have to accomplish, right? That's the difficult thing. And it seems pretty straightforward. It's like, yeah, well, okay, you let go of it and gravity happened. But what if we didn't know about gravity yet? What if that was part of the thing we were trying to figure out in the first place? There are lots of different reasons why we might see that same pattern of data, right? Well, maybe it is gravity. Maybe it's that there's, you know, the big old earth is down there and it's pulling on this pen. And so when I stop holding it up, the pen drops. Uh, but, you know, if we, don't, if we don't know about gravity yet, then there's a bunch of other explanations that we can have. Maybe pens just really love the ground. Um, maybe you can't see it, but I'm actually throwing the pen when I let go of it. I'm not just dropping it. Uh, so I mean, I'm pushing some, some sort of momentum onto it. Uh, maybe uh, there's uh, some sort of wind that you can't see that's pushing it on, right? There's lots of explanations that we can give to data. And the tricky thing 
about identification is finding a way that will allow us to isolate just the explanation that we are interested in, right? To, if we take this data, we said, hey, I got that collected this new scientific data, the whole depend data, you either hold it and it's up here, or you drop it and it's down there. What can we make of this? And you take it to a bunch of skeptical people who don't quite believe your whole gravity thing. And they can come up with some alternate explanations for you. Identification is the process of making sure that when you look at this data, you are isolating just the part of the explanation that you're interested in. So we'd have to think about, well, what are the other explanations that we might have to deal with? Uh, and then how can we narrow it down to understand our data generating process better? So that is our goal. We know that there is a data generating process that explains how the world works. And we have this idea as empiricists uh, that we can use data, the observations that we make to understand those laws. That's our goal. Let me give you another simple example. So let's say that I got a lamp here, right? Uh, and we are interested in understanding how this lamp works, okay? Uh, and we can look at it, we think, okay, what's the data generating process that leads the light in this lamp to be on or off, right? That is a data generating process that we might be interested in. Uh, and so you might take some data and you might observe it. You say, okay, well, you know, I got this little string right here. So, I mean, you know, simple enough there, I'll just pull it uh, and the uh, light does not go on. Right. And so we know how a lamp works. So it's kind of weird that the lamp didn't just go on right there. But say we didn't know how the lamp works, we would be sort of scratching our heads, figuring out what exactly it is. So you have to actually have a good understanding of the data generating process to make sense of the data. Right. Because, you know, if you were just trying to figure out how a lamp works, you might conclude at this point that that little string doesn't do anything. But because we do know how a lamp works, uh, I can tell you that the reason the string didn't do anything is because I did not plug this lamp in. So you can't just take the data because sometimes the data will lie to you if you don't understand the rest of the data generating process. So as we go through this idea of identification, as we go through this concept of trying to use data to understand the world around us, we have to do as much as we can to understand both the fact that we are trying to understand a data generating process and to fill in as many of those gaps as possible to learn things like a lamp's not going to work without electricity uh, before we try to figure out what that little string does. So we have to learn about our context very clearly. Uh, we have to keep in mind that our goal is to use observations and data to understand those underlying processes. And we have to keep in mind that there are going to be other explanations for the data that we see. And if we want to just figure out the one that we're interested in, we need to be able to think about what those other explanations are, what we think might be in the data generating process. And then as we get into actual identification, how can we get rid of those other explanations so that we can make the claim confidently that this data that we saw actually answers my question of interest. It actually tells me about what this little string does. All right, that's it. In the next video, we'll talk a bit more about identification generally. Thank you.